Okay, everyone, we're recording. And Sam will join shortly. Okay, we're back again. It says I'm David, but I'm not David. I'm Sam. Um, I'm a student at the University of Portland. And uh, John got me into security. He taught at my, taught my cybersecurity class during my undergrad today. That brings me to here. It's really fostered an interest for me. And it's how I got involved in OWASP Portland. I want to thank all the wonderful people that helped put this together and get us to where we are right now. So if all of you have come here from the meetup page, uh, there is a link in the uh, meetup signup that you will uh, want to follow to sign up for the Secure Copeware Challenge. I'll put it in the Zoom chat um, as well. I'll start sharing my screen. There we go. Can everyone see that right there? Perfect. So this will be the page you will land on. Um, if you follow the link in the signup, um, I'll pull up the chat real quick and drop um, the meetup link. The meetup link also has a link to the Portland OWASP Slack channel, uh, which I encourage all of you to join. I think there is a text channel in which a lot of the information surrounding the Secure Coding Tournament uh, will be going on. Um, we just got the uh, training modules enabled today. So once you guys are all signed up for this, be sure to use that link, by the way, because it does contain a token you will need to sign up. Um, it shouldn't take you very long. Let us know once you're all ready. We'll begin the uh, navigating through it. Um, just as an overview of the uh, login portal, once you're in, I think you'll see something close to this. And this will show you where uh, your modules uh, up at the top here are present. And you'll get this dashboard for the tournament as well. Um, so there's some module assessments, which are kind of like graded tests that help your uh, ranking score. Um, in this current rank, I'm in first, I guess, because it just started today. Um, and I believe I'm the only one to do it. So uh, victory by being the only participant. Um, and the tournament will appear here once it uh, gets scheduled. Uh, and I think that opens on the 21st. So tournaments, uh, once you go to the tournaments, you'll get this cool ASCII art and uh, the message that the yeah, admins have not created it, um, which again, you do have to wait for the 21st for that to start. Um, there's your training module up here, which uh, you can select a language to work with. They've got a ton of options. Um, and you can select one active language at a time. So they have a different number of challenges uh, for each language. So I work in Java Spring a lot um, for my job. And uh, there's about 1,200 challenges for that. Um, some of you may work in C Sharp .NET, MVC. There's about 1,400 for that as well, 1,300. Um, and then there's stuff for Docker and uh, ANSI Basic, a um, bunch of different stuff. Um, then you can pick from here. And I don't believe the amount, number of challenges has much to do with uh, the points you score. So if you exhaust one challenge, you can either move on to the next or find something, go and learn a new, uh, new framework to work with. Um, the assessments are, is another one that is not quite licensed yet. Um, and that one, the admins need to enable it for us. I believe that's probably going to start again uh, when the tournament rolls around. And then there's these cool training uh, sections here where the application security concepts module, um, you can pop that open and take a look at all these different concepts. There is a short video in each one, about four or five minutes for all of them. Um, tons of great content there. I'll leave that link in the, uh, in the chat as well. Um, as far as I know, most of the content looks like it's going to be the OWASP top 10 stuff. Um, so there is a link to that as well in the chat and the top 25 CWEs. Um, so studying up on those will give you a good grasp of how you can expect some of the challenges to take form and um, appear, I guess, in terms of general conceptualized uh, large abstractions. And um, it's up to you and understanding your language uh, or framework to really get into the nitty gritty of how those are implemented in, say, Python Django or Python Flask or Java Spring. Um, and identify where those will stick out. Um, so if we go to the training module at the mission control, um, you can see that these are the top 10 most common weaknesses that uh, uh, they will run you through pretty much. So the common weaknesses in web applications um, that pop up here, they do, they focus on two at a time. Um, so I have Java Spring enabled right now. I think it's Java Spring API. And um, all the exercises in each one of these modules will um, focus on 
one of those two issues. So I can continue with this and um, it gives you this whole, uh, I guess, fictionalized attack scenario of what you have to defend against. Um, and you accept this mission, so to speak, and it drops you into this menu, which sort of looks like an IDE. It's not, don't try to edit here. I mean, you probably can, but maybe not. Um, it shows you the files that are affected by this vulnerability. So the current vulnerability that this hacker in our story is attempting to exploit um, is he has access control. Um, he's using this vulnerability to gain some sort of access, unwanted access to our application or system. And all the highlighted um, warning signs on these different folders and files um, indicate that that folder or file may have something to do with that uh, vulnerability that that hacker is taking advantage of. Um, so the some of these will require more than one vulnerable code blocks. So this is pretty much requiring you to dig through this repository that they give you and locate um, out of all of these potential uh, exploits um, and insecure patches of code, which one is the one you're actually looking for. Um, so we can probably look through, we'll start at the top here of API Java. Um, some controls up here, you can pop this out, which gives you a full view of uh, IDE with the longer lines. Um, I don't know if you can drag this back and forth. I'd be surprised if you couldn't. Um, either way, you can scroll sideways. Um, and this allows you to quickly navigate between files. So jumping between the different uh, highlighted files or the uh, highlighted exploits they have. So up here, we have an import or a declaration of a static URI endpoint for the API. Um, we can hop down to the order mapper, take different looks at each one. And once you have one identified, you go ahead and you click, let's say uh, we decide that, um, I don't know, something in here is not what we're after. And we believe this to be it. Um, we can then check it with the next button and it will say we either pass or fail. You, you have an option to retry if you don't do so well. Um, so we can also get a hint. Um, so it's okay to get some help, et cetera. It will cap the number of points you can get though, so it's a good thing to keep that in mind. Sometimes it'll direct you to a video first, um, which you can then watch and re-attack the problem as you see fit. Um, for now, in the interest of time, uh, instead of taking a hint, I'm going to randomly click on the vulnerabilities in the hope that uh, I guess one correctly. And if you, uh, if you run out, you can reveal the answer as well. Okay, um, so once you have the vulnerability located and identified, it will give you the option to replace that piece of code with something new. Um, and it shows you this diff tree structure of the, uh, of the files you've been working with. Um, the deletions are big red Xs. Um, additions sometimes come in the form of check marks, green check marks, that they don't appear to be any here. Um, so if we take a look at the diffs from this order controller, and the changes that have attempted to be made to combat this, um, doesn't look like there have been any. The highlighted ones are um, the important ones that they have been changed in the yellow. So the diffs here, um, this is one proposed solution for our secure code issue. Um, and once you review this, uh, you can either reject or accept it. So if you reject it, you can move on to a new solution. So they have four possible diffs that you could choose from um, or possible ways that this code could be reworked. And by sorting through these and checking each one, um, you can then arrive at a solution that allows, the, uh, allows you to move forward. For interest of time, I'll stay solution three. Um, hope I'll get lucky, retry. Um, and this is in the interest of time. I, I'm, a, I'm a master of these, of course. I'm just kidding. Um, so there we go. 
See, I told you. Great. You'll win this. You'll win this competition easily. Um, now we can move on, and the challenge will then be complete, and it will award you points based on your performance. Uh, so at this point, uh, it kind of restarts you, and it gets increasingly more difficult uh, with every step. So now there are slightly more um, vulnerabilities to identify and patch. Uh, and there may also be more than one vulnerability that does move around in that file as well. Um, so I think this is a brief overview of how the training is structured. Um, all of them are pretty like geographically based, so there'll be some attacker going to wherever you decide to place your servers. You can select a country, select Malaysia or Democratic Republic of Congo, anywhere, anywhere in the world, um, and it will direct attackers trying to take some vulnerability, um, as well as you giving you the opportunity to fix it. Um, so are there any questions so far? So mostly it's pretty self-guided and self-explanatory. If uh, Kendra or John, if you have anything to add, please jump in and interrupt me. I did this a couple of weeks ago at a different place. We only had it for a couple of hours, so it was more like this, this fast paced and, and get as many in as possible. So the training for this, like what we're seeing now, you should have access to, that's gonna be from, it's already started from the 14th until the 21st, then from the tournament times, will be on 21st until the 24th. So you have a lot more time as opposed to that. So a lot of folks look at it from a pure volume thing as, and so they don't, you don't spend a whole lot of time on each problem. That might be one way to do it. I recommend picking maybe two or three languages. Start with your first, you know, the, the language you know the best and for the practice and then pick the language that you know the second best and and third and just go from that point but usually you don't have to spend a whole lot of time and the way it works too is if you do get it wrong you won't get as many points and then if you keep going less and less points to a point where they either say if you want a hint or if you just want to to move on so I, unless you really want to solve that problem i, I think a, a good strategy is maybe attempt a few tries and if it, if it's not really clear what they're trying to do then then move on that's probably the best way of getting the most points because you want to collect as much as you go along. I do think the winner gets a hoodie as well. So this is not without reward. Your efforts will be rewarded. Matt, Kendra, do you have anything to add? Or is, I, think, I think John touched on that pretty well, just different strategies. Yep, you both covered it great. I think it's just a matter of trial and error. There's no right way to find any of the vulnerabilities. I would say a lot of times, yeah, I, I just like try things until I get it. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's also a different strategy towards victory that works differently for everybody. Um, John mentioned trying to do as many things as possible. And if you run into an obstacle, you can uh, move on from that obstacle. Uh, but there's also the approach of really trying to, if you pick a language you know you're okay at and you want to get better at it, um, really working through that language and taking the time to, when you do encounter obstacles, to go over a video and uh, revisit that with. Um, new learn new material that you've learned um, and attempt and attempt to solve that problem um, there's going to be some different approaches and you can go for a greater degree of completion that way i think um, i've never done a ctf before but i assume that's pretty much uh, there's no strategy that fits everybody and i encourage you guys all the everyone to play around and kind of make their own as they go is there anything else anybody wants to see or i just had a question so when the tournament starts um you just pick your your language and it's just uh challenges like new challenges that are available yet yeah so these trainings are pretty much simulations of what the actual challenges will be like or the actual assessments will be like i do i don't know if you can pick more than, more than one language um i would assume so or assume you could work in one switch to another work in that switch back i think that's i'd have to play with it some more to get a solid answer for you um but yeah that's pretty much how uh, the format of the competition will be. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So one other thing too, so if you know people, this is not just for OWASP members, but for anyone. So if you know people at work or any place, they're free to, to participate as well. Yeah, and definitely join the Slack channel. That's where a lot of communication will probably be happening during the event um, and after the event as well. Also, once things get moving in the direction of in-person meetings again, that's probably where a lot of those will be 
announced and or coordinated even before they may be on Meetup as well. So if you have something you do want to talk about um, at a meeting or study night, uh, you can talk to one of us in the Slack channel or figure out who to get in touch with and we'll put you, uh, get you set up for that as well. well if there's no more questions, um, I think I'll let you guys kind of run rampant with uh, the training modules for now. John, you can stop the recording. Um, and we'll be around kind of doing an office hour thing. We'll be in the Zoom call. If you guys have any questions, you can hop on and feel free to ask. Ask Kendra or myself. I'll be around for the whole hour. I don't know how long Kendra will stick around. But if you guys have any anything you get stuck on or any uh, registration issues, uh, let me know and I can reach out to the administrators or try to help you through it.